God, welcome to the long road home. We should be finishing out Psalm 2 today. The last stanza, the last paragraph, the last section. Be wise, O kings, be warned, O rulers of the earth. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Let's just go line by line. Be wise, O kings. The psalm has given them information about the king. And not only the king, but the king that the king established, which is the anointed one, Jesus Christ, or in that day, David, which is pointing forwards to Jesus Christ. The reader, or the nations, the, the kings, have been given information about this person. They have been given perspective on what they are compared to him, which is not much. And in light of that, they are told, be wise. Don't do something stupid like defy him. Don't do something stupid like create laws or support laws or not break down laws that oppose his righteous decrees, such as the sanctity of life. Be wise, O kings. Be warned, O rulers of the earth. So wisdom is just information. It's just knowledge about God and who he is. Be warned is direct. It says, you also shall perish lest you repent and believe. It says, you also shall face this God that is righteous and is holy. And you also will be held accountable for every vain word and every decree that defies his goodness and righteousness and glory. Everything that you do, whether you are a private citizen, whether you are a, a, a public servant, a politician I mean, whatever you are, everything you do that defies him, there's a punishment coming for it. And it will either be laid upon the back of Jesus Christ on the cross for his elect, or it will will be punished in the hell of fire and in time, inside of time, before the end of days, there will be a recompense. You see, Israel, when the, the Psalms were compiled, Israel was in Babylon. I'm sorry, Judah was in Babylon. Israel was already completely gone from, I believe, Assyria. There are recompenses, and that was the covenant people of God. There are recompenses for sins of individuals and there are recompenses for sins of nations that are allowed to continue. Allowed to continue. Not, not just cause. I'm not saying the people that cause these things. I'm saying the people that allow them to continue. For instance, when Israel was sent into exile in Babylon, Joash had done everything he could and it was still too late. He did reform after reform. He brought the he brought down the altars to the false gods. He he brought the law back into reading. I believe that was him. He did everything a king could do and it wasn't enough. Because they had already sealed their fate. He was given mercy for his lifetime, and that was it. So be wise, O kings, be warned, O rulers of the earth. The righteous God, the Holy One of Israel, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, the Lord on high, the King of kings and Lord of lords, ruler of all, seated upon the throne in heaven, with a rod of iron with which to judge the nations, who is also the healer of the nations, will judge every vain action and word. And it will be judged on his back for individuals that repent and believe. 
and it will be judged in time for nations that do not repent and believe, and it will be judged in eternity for individuals who do not repent and believe. There is a recompense for wrong. Be wise and be warned. This is a holy God, and He is the avenger of evil. He avenges all sins against Him, His people, and His creation. From abortion to blasphemy. From homosexuality to idolatry. There will be a punishment on the back of Christ or in the hell of fire. And in time. Kiss the sun. This is a picture of fealty. You are swearing your fealty. You are showing reverence for God. When you kiss the sun, this is like he extends his hand or a signet ring. And, and you are a, a knight or a peasant or, or whatever in fealty and subservience to this king of kings. And you in... And there... And yes, there is affection in the Christian life. I am not saying there is not. But this kiss refers primarily to fealty, subservience, and submission. And secondarily to love. Because it is in the context of Christ's eternal rule and reign. Be wise, O King, be born to a ruler of the earth. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry. This is the Bible saying, point blank, proof positive, no, no bones about it. God is angry with sin. And he is angry with sinners because he doesn't throw the sin, I'm, I'm pulling from R.C. Sproul here, he doesn't throw the sin into hell, he throws the sinner into hell. He is angry, but in his anger he remembers mercy and that he offers repentance, he offers grace, he offers salvation. And he remembers mercy to all who will turn and believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as their only salvation, their only hope, and their only means to glory, and the only means to forgiveness, his righteous finished work. And they repent of their sins when confronted with his righteousness, not to earn his favor, but simply as the proper response to their sinfulness as they turn to the righteous and holy God for salvation. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Now this doesn't mean he's precocious. Uh, this doesn't mean that he's whimsical. That he that he changes his mood quickly. It's not that. It's not that he's in a good mood one minute and then in a terrible mood the next. If anyone's ever grown up with someone or knew someone or or lived with someone who had um, bipolar depression, it's this type of mental disease where they will be in a great mood one minute and then in a in a blind rage the next and then just too exhausted to stand the next that's not what it's describing God to be when it says his wrath is quickly kindled this is like the well-trained um, police officer or security officer or, or um, secret service man who is calm and collected and able to have a, a, a calm conversation with someone. And then the moment aggression starts, they react violently and explosively and stop the threat. This is the idea that God extends mercy, 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 warning, 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 wrath. And the wrath is sudden, it is quick. It is like a bolt of lightning. It's like the it's like the flood. There was a hundred years of mercy, 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 of warning, 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 and then boom, door closed on the ark, rain falling down, no more hope. It is the sudden, powerful moving of God in his preordained plan after already extended every kindness of mercy and every opportunity to repent. 
there is no more room for mercy once that moment is hit. And we don't know when that moment is in our lives. When that moment is when we are hardened to the point where we cannot repent anymore. Where we, I'm pulling from John Piper here, where we like Esau can seek repentance with tears and find none. So it is not tomorrow that we seek the Savior. It is today. Tomorrow is the devil's day. I'm pulling from Steve Lawson with that phrase. Tomorrow is the devil's day. It never comes and it's always too late. Today, today seek him while he may be found. Today, call upon the name of the Lord. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. If you are one of his, here's the juxtaposition. You have the holy, righteous, all-powerful, just, avenging God of the universe on your side and there is nothing that you could ever do. If you have taken refuge to him through his son Jesus Christ, there is nothing that you could ever possibly do to sever yourself from him, to take yourself out of his hands, to ruin that relationship, to make him hate you, to make him mad at you, to make him disown you. You are his and he is yours eternally and he will keep you until his return or until he calls you home. And so you are blessed, you are happy, the word blessed means happy because you are perfectly happy. And then think about all of the powers that could come against you and the, in the context of this psalm where we talked about just how powerful God is. Just how much authority he has. Just how unfazed he is by all the might that the world has to throw at him. And know that he's in your corner. That he is protecting you. That you are eternally loved by him. You cannot, you cannot have a greater security than the fact that that God, that kind of God, that kind of Savior is your Savior. There is nothing else more secure in all the universe than that you take refuge in him. It is greater than any bunker, greater than any castle wall, greater than any any getaway that nobody knows about. You are a refugee running to him to be saved. And he will not turn you away if you turn to him. So seek the Lord while you may be found. He will not turn you away. He will take you in. Yes, there will come a day where you cannot repent. But if you can still say, forgive me, Lord, I am a sinner. If you can still look to Jesus, that is not today. Look to him while he may be found before it's too late. And call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. Repent and believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kiss the Son lest He be angry and you perish in the way. Don't perish. Don't perish. But live and have life abundantly. Live and have more life than you've ever had before. Not not your best life now, but really living. It, it was, it was uh, uh, the movie Braveheart where Jay Warner Wallace says, Every man dies, but not every man truly lives. Truly live. Find life in Christ. Truly live. Well, I'm home. And God bless you on your long road home.